What's up, students? Welcome. Thank you for joining us for our second Scripture Sunday of the summer. We're going to have a great night, and we're going to continue our series, This Changed Everything. And tonight, you're going to get to hear from a couple leaders and hear stories of how God moved in really cool ways in their lives. But before we jump into that, I want to just go over a couple quick announcements for this week. Tomorrow is going to be our first Mission Monday of the summer. And you're going to see on our Instagram some options that are posted tomorrow morning. This is going to be a serve at home mission day. So we're going to give you guys a handful of options. You don't have to pick any of those. You can actually make up your own, but we just want you to serve. Man, we love going on missions here at Bentry. And because we couldn't go in person, we want you guys to be able to do that in some way. So serving at home is the next best thing. So serve, tag us, take a picture of what you're doing. Let us know how it's going. Tuesday, we're going to be once again having Trivia Tuesday. Now, uh, some of you joined us last week, and if you didn't, man, you really missed out because we gave away three full pizzas. People got to eat that entire pizza for themselves, probably. This Tuesday, 5 o'clock, on our Instagram Live, we're going to be live giving away more food prizes. So join us. Get ready to answer some trivia. It's going to be awesome. Wednesday, another Devo will be posted on our YouTube. And then Thursday, high school, you guys are going to have table talks. If you want more info about that, just reach out to our high school team. I do want to throw out also, next Sunday is Father's Day. If you didn't remember that already, you have a whole week. Get your dad something. Appreciate him in some way. Because of that, we won't be posting a video, but we will be posting a video again here that next Sunday on the 28th. So, let's jump into tonight. The first leader we're going to hear from is Leslie Shipman. Leslie is a leader uh, for our sophomore girls, and she has a story of how God changed everything that she wants to share with you guys. So let's check it out. Hey students, I'm so glad to be with you tonight. I can't wait to gather in person with you again, um, but this will have to do for now. And I'm really excited to share with you guys about a time that God changed everything for me, my entire perspective on his power and who he is. So in order to really understand this story and how God changed me, I want to give you a little bit of background on me. So when I was in high school, um, I went on my very first missions trip. I grew up in church, but this was, we had a new youth pastor and this was the first time that any of our youth pastors had actually um, introduced us to missions. And so we went on a mission trip to Louisiana and it was great, we had fun, um, but I didn't fully understand. But then in college, um, I really started to understand the big picture of relationship with God, that it's seeking his word and pursuing his presence and being in the word and just praying and, and knowing him, having a real intimate relationship with him. And in the process of doing that, God really grew my heart for missions. I went on four mission trips in college and really started to understand the importance of it. But that's not even the big point here. <laughs> so after um, college, I went to Ecuador for a year. It was the hardest year of my life because I was working so hard and getting zero recognition for it. And I was exhausted. I was experiencing depression that I didn't realize I was experiencing. And so it was a really, really hard year of my life. I don't know that I learned any lessons that year, but come to, um, back to the States, get a job as a nanny where I'm not able to go on trips. So I don't take a, a missions trip for um, a long time. And when I finally did take a missions trip, it was with middle school, it was a great trip. And then right after we got back from that middle school trip, I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Breast cancer rocked my world from September 2015 to October of 2016. I was out of commission, nothing good was happening. But God had brought me to a really great ministry called Right Now Media, where I got to serve the church on a daily basis. And not only that, but I was given an extra week of PTO to go on international missions trips. And so obviously that year I did not go on an international missions trip. But about a year after I was done with chemo in 2017, I decided, you know what? I have the ability, I'm going on a missions trip this year. And so I looked at all the trips and the young adult trip to Brazil was really the best fit for me. It was a good week um, where I wouldn't be too overwhelmed with work. And so I went on that trip and this is where God radically changed my perspective on his power and his glory and on my weakness. <laughs> So as I said, I'm a year out of breast cancer. I am not super strong yet, but I'm good enough that I have most of my energy back. 
And so I decided that I was gonna go on this trip and I was gonna kind of keep my cancer to myself. We were working with like seven or eight um, interpreters there in Brazil and none of them knew me. They'd never met me before and I didn't want to be the pitiful girl that everyone was everyone was watching after all week. And so I went in saying I'm gonna be tough. I'm gonna keep it to myself that I had cancer and I just want to I want the focus to be on others and not on me. Little did I know it really was still on me because I wanted to be strong and tough. And the fact was, I was weak. I was weak and unable to do things that I, before cancer, would have been able to do. So we go on this trip, we're all prepared. I'm feeling good because I had taken charge of VBS. I had everything taken care of. I was a one man VBS planning show team and um, it was great. It was awesome. I had everything ready to go. So we get on the plane, all of our supplies are good, we get to Brazil, everything's good, and then we get finally to the place where we're gonna stay. So for our trip, when we were doing ministry, we'd leave our hotel, get on a boat, take about a 30 minute drive or ride on a boat to our village, and then we would be in the village all day, and then we would take a boat back to our hotel. So that day, that very first day, I went through the entire day in excruciating pain my head to my toes. I was dying. My knees were hurting. Actually, all of my joints were hurting. My body was hurting. I had a headache. I was miserable. But I said, Leslie, you are going to be tough and you are not going to whine. You're not going to complain. You're here for these kids to love on them and teach them about Jesus and you are not going to complain. Get over it, suck it up and keep going. So that's what I did. I got over it, I sucked it up, and I kept going. Well, by the end of the day, I was beat. I barely held it in until I got to my hotel room. I got to my hotel room and I collapsed on my bed. And I was sobbing because I was in so much pain and I was hurting and I didn't want anyone to feel sorry for me. And so I was trying to get it out before anybody else got to the hotel room. Well, who else would be my roommate except for our young adults pastor, Amy Cedrone? She gets to the room and she's like, are you okay, Leslie? And I'm like, no, I was miserable. I was in so much pain. And I told her, I said, I don't want to be the person that everyone's having to take care of all week and having to worry about. I just want to be here and serve. And Amy sat me down and she, she said something so wise to me. She said, Leslie, your weakness is what is going to make God strong. God can't show up and show off until you admit your, your weakness. She said, I'm going to challenge you to share during our team time what your day was like and ask our team to pray for you. And I was like, I think she's really saying you have to share it. <laughs> she told me I had the option, but I had to share it. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna share it. We'll, we'll do this. So we get to team time and I shared everyone um, what I was going through and what my day had been like. And I said, I just need y'all to pray for me. You know, just throughout the week, pray for me. And one of our interpreters said, Leslie, can we pray for you now? And I got in the middle of our room this hot sweaty hotel room and everyone laid their hands on me and prayed over me that God would work in me that his Holy Spirit would fill me to overflowing so that I could minister and they prayed over me for about two minutes it was not a long prayer they prayed over me and in that two minutes from my toes up to my head I could start feeling God removing pain it's the most surreal thing I've ever experienced in my life and by the end of that prayer, I felt 100% better. I hadn't taken any pain meds, no Advil, no Aleve, nothing. And it was like this, the Holy Spirit came over me and made me whole again. <laughs> and it was a beautiful thing. And that week I asked for help when I needed it. And what I learned through that, not only that God is a healer, cause he is, he still does miracles today. They might look different than what they did when he was on this earth in human form, but God still does miracles today. But even bigger than that, what I learned is that I am never going to have everything it takes to glorify God because I 
cannot glorify God without God in me. I can't do it. It's not physically possible because I'm a human and my job is not to be this great person so that other people can say, oh, Leslie, you're so great. And I can say, oh, it's all God. No, my job is to actually let God work through me. And when I stop trying to do things on my own strength, like I did in college, like I did in Ecuador, that's when he can work through me because I stop worrying about getting credit or appreciation. And I start worrying about, God, I need you in me for every single thing that I do in my life. And that is really what I want to challenge you guys to. What's that thing that you're really, really good at? Something that you've always been able to do with little or no effort. It's been a gift since you were little and everyone's been like, oh, we knew that that kid was going to do that or going to do that. What was, what's that thing? I would challenge you to give that to God and say, God, I know I'm good at this, but you're better at it and you can glorify yourself through me. So God, I ask you to work in and through me. On the other side of things, you might be thinking, I'm not really good at anything. I'm actually really struggling with this and this and this and this. I would argue that you are someone that God wants to glorify himself through, just like those people who have all these talents and skills. You, I challenge you to ask God, what is it that you wanna do through me? God, I pray that you would give me strength and that you would work in me to glorify you. That you would remind me that it's not about me, that it is about you. And I promise you, you're gonna see God do amazing things, both in your heart, but also through your life and through the things you do. And right now, if you don't mind, I just wanna pray for you guys. God, I thank you for these students, for their heart to be here and to hear your word and to hear these stories. God, I pray that each and every student, as you put something on their heart to give up to you, that they would surrender that thing to you and that they would ask you to empower them to glorify you in that talent or in that weakness. I thank you for these students again and for what you're gonna do for your kingdom through these students in the future and today. I pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope to see you guys soon. May we get in the building soon. And I hope you're all having a great summer and not getting too hot. See you later. Man, Leslie, thank you for praying and for telling us that story. Such a great story of God healing and moving in awesome ways and changing everything in your life. And such a great encouragement and challenge for each of us that God works in and through us, that he can use what we're good at to glorify him. And he can even have us look introspectively and ask questions, say, God, what do you want to do through me? How can you use what you've gifted me with God, to work in amazing ways? What a great story. Uh, the next story, we're going to hear from Jeremy. Jeremy is one of our seventh grade guy leaders, and he has a story he wants to share with you guys. So let's check it out. Hey guys, my name is Jeremy Gonzalez. Uh, I'm a seventh grade leader in MSM. Shout out to my boys, I love and miss them. So to go along with the series about this changed everything. I'll start out by saying, uh, when I was young, I was raised in a Catholic school um, until about fifth grade. Uh, I didn't learn much about Catholicism. I was never really interested in it, but I did learn about who God was, who Jesus was and what he did for us. Um, I took that, I knew that, um, I knew that was a fact, but outside of that, uh, I, I didn't know much else. When I was growing up, and as I went from kindergarten to 12th grade, um, things were, there were some really great things in my life that happened, and, and some just things in my life were easy. Um, school, I never made a B in school. I made A's all the way until my freshman year in college, actually. Playing sports, I was always really great at sports. I played basketball, track, cross country, football, whatever, you, you name it, besides tennis, um, I excelled at. Um, things outside of school, um, you know, trades, working with my dad, um, technology, uh, I, I excelled at these things. Uh, but I knew something was missing. 
despite all of this, I knew that I wasn't being filled. I, I wasn't complete as a Christian. And the way I knew this is because all these good things in my life happened, but I can never feel truly joyful or happy. Um, and not only because of the good things, but because all the bad things that happened in my life, mm. uh, surrounding, uh, death, um, injuries, uh, financial hardship, uh, all these things were in my life and the way that I reacted to those, I knew that I wasn't complete as a Christian. I knew God was there. I knew that my relationship with him was not full. It wasn't complete. It wasn't where it needed to be. So throughout these times that I was going through both good and bad, um, I knew that my my purpose in life, I whatever it was, I wasn't going straight towards it. I wasn't pursuing it. I wasn't doing what I needed to do as a newborn Christian. I, I told myself over and over from week to week, day to day, um, from grade to grade, whether it was uh, sixth grade, eighth grade, 10th grade, there's got to be more to life than this. This can't be it. This, it it's got to be so much more. Um, and then about a decade ago, I had heard a sermon and it made me realize that the spirit within us isn't something that grows stronger or weaker as time goes on or how you live as a Christian. You can't, you can't train your spirit to be stronger or weaker. Uh, one of the characteristics of God is that he's unchanging. His character cannot change. His strength, his power cannot change. He's the same from the beginning all the way until the end. And so once I realized that, and I knew that I had the spirit within me, um, and from the sermon, it was said that the only thing that changes is how much I allow his light, his spirit to shine through my actions and my character. Once I learned that it was a, a whole new world to me, I can never go back. I can never go back to living the life that I once lived before knowing this. So with that being known, I knew that the change comes from the inside out. When you look at me, you see my flesh, and that's truly not who I am. It's a part of me and it's not who I am. If you could see within me and you could see the spirit inside me, you would see Jesus. You would see God. And that's where our actions, um, our thoughts, everything should be sourced from within. Because that's where the spirit of Jesus, that's where the spirit of Christ resides. So, so that day, as amazing as it was and is, that doesn't mean that uh, your life will go on to be uh, perfect or you have perfect understanding in things or you won't go through hardships. Uh, you won't face roadblocks in your life or that you'll fully experience the happiness of, of the great things that happen in your life. Uh, a matter of fact, mm, you might find yourself questioning sometimes. Questioning, is the spirit truly inside me? Because there, you'll go through things where you're like, I, this, I can't be a Christian if I react in like that. I can't be a Christian if I can't find joy in this. I don't have the spirit inside me if I can't react this way, if I don't truly feel this way. But questioning doesn't mean the spirit isn't inside you. We also have to remember that the enemy is smart and he will try to fight us with doubt. He will try to be a wedge in between us and God. So all I can say is don't believe those lies because the enemy will try to push you further and further away from God. So when you're allowing the spirit to live through you, your character becomes more and more like the character of God. And so you may have noticed this in some people, some of your friends, some of your family members, where before you knew they were a Christian, but maybe they were living like a dead person.
And then after they stop themselves from getting in the way of the spirit showing through, you notice that they almost seem changed. They almost seem renewed. And I really think that that's what, that's what goes on. People stop getting in the way of the spirit and allow the spirit to shine through and to change you from the inside out. Because God is with us from the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God is with us from that moment to eternity. There's nothing that we can do to escape his grasp. And the enemy will never, ever, ever be strong enough to take you from the hands of God. It's something powerful and it, it, it's, it's something strange and it's something that's hard to wrap your head around. But we honestly, we, we don't deserve God. We don't deserve to be saved. But that's how much he loves us. If everything else in the world fails me, if nothing in life is fair, I still have the spirit within me. If I fail at everything, I still have the spirit within me. Uh, when I look back on my life and I see the times that uh, I was really a slave to my own desires, I was a slave to my flesh. I was consulting my flesh. What should I do in this moment? What do I want to do in this moment? Do I want to lie, cheat, steal? Um, I, was a, I was a slave to those desires and it reflected in my character throughout my life. Now, I wasn't a bad person. I was uh, a worldly bad person, right? I was a straight A student. Um, I did charity. I went to church. I helped my parents around the house i never got in trouble at school but still i was tempted with all the same things that everybody else is but it's because i was consulting my flesh instead of the spirit within me but now after i came to this realization i could fully understand what it meant to have the spirit inside me so i was no longer a slave to my selfish desires i was now a slave to christ the one who saved me and loved me to the one who who gave my life meeting to the one who filled me up to the one who made me complete as a Christian. Now that I know Christ, I have a joy in my heart that whenever I read the Bible, I talk with other brothers and sisters, or I teach my middle school group with them. Uh, I just, it, it gets bigger and bigger. That that's how I really know that uh, I can live my life through the spirit. When something bad happens in my life, like when I'm betrayed by somebody, one of my friends, a stranger, when I'm hurt by, by something somebody said about me, or I feel like I don't belong, I know that Jesus won't forsake me and I still have the spirit within me. And I ask myself, now I don't ask myself, I don't ask my flesh, I ask myself in the spirit, how do I react in this moment? So some people may ask, like, how can you be happy during this? How can you be joyful this happened? How can you not be so angry with this person? How can you not want to get revenge? And it's because I'm consulting that spirit within me. I'm having a conversation with God and I'm displaying his characteristics of love, grace, and mercy. But as I allow him to shine through, that's what people see. And honestly, it's a it's an overwhelming, positive feeling that I can just be at peace in those moments. So I realize the power of God's grace. I realize the power of the spirit within me, that it's not something that gets weaker or stronger as the days go by. It has all of God's power from day one, from the, from the day that I accept Jesus Christ. And only I can get in the way of letting that not completely show through and be a part of my life. So you have to allow the spirit to completely change you from who you once were to who he's called you to be. We are not worthy of him, but again, that's how much he loves us. At the worst and best points of my life, God took me as I was, and he was there to save me. If you read John 3.3 3 or 1 Corinthians 2.12, it talks about how the Holy Spirit resuscitates us, brings us and, and resuscitate. If you look at that word, it, it means to bring somebody back from either death or, or the brink of death. 
and he renews us, he regenerates us, he makes us fresh and new so that we can see and understand the things of God, so we can live for him, by him, through him. In Ephesians 2, 5, it says the Holy Spirit makes us alive with Christ because we were dead before that. If, you don't, if you're not living in the Spirit, you're dead. The Spirit makes dead bones alive and move again. That's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. And in Acts 1, 8, Jesus commissioned his disciples. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We have the spirit within us and now it's our duty and our purpose and our mission to share that with others. And I'm so glad that I get the opportunity to do that with you through MSM and, and outside of the church. It's been a pleasure talking with you and I hope that y'all have a great summer. I cannot wait to see all of you again. And thank you, Jeremy, for sharing that story. Such a powerful reminder that we can live from the indwelling spirit of Christ in us daily. Right? That when we become Christians, we have the full power of the spirit living in us and available for us to live out of. And what an encouragement to you guys as students to, to live from the indwelling Christ every day. Right? To, to choose to say, yes, God, work through me and as you do, work in me. I hope that these stories were encouraging to you. And I hope that as you hear our leaders talk about ways that God has changed everything, you would think through your own life and think through the times that God showed up big and changed everything about your faith. And we have had such an awesome time tonight, and I thank you for joining us. We won't be here next Sunday because it's Father's Day once again, so hang out with your dad, love on him, uh, but we will be back the next Sunday. And check out everything that's going on throughout the week. It's going to be such a fun week. Love you guys. Catch you later. Bye.